Välkommen till Uganda. Här arbetar vi sedan 2011 med både get projekt och utbildning av olika slag. Exempelvis ett Comprehensive College på landsbygden utanför Kampala. Och vi ser återigen hur sponsrad skolgång förändrar livsförutsättningarna för barn från fattiga omständigheter. This school has made me what I am today. I've gained my confidence through this school. With this school, I've moved boundaries. Not only in my academics, but also in the co-curricular activities. I am the leader I am today because of this school. Faktum är att ABC Barnmissionens skolor utmärker sig även i Uganda med en mycket stor andel elever som får högsta betyg. Utbildning är viktig redan från förskolenivå och faktiskt är samtliga skolor ni sett på bilderna härifrån Uganda uppbyggda av en anmärkningsvärd kvinna, vår egen Trudy Odida. So we're here with Trudy Odida in Uganda. Thank you so much Trudy for having us. You're welcome. Could you tell us a little about the nature of the work you're doing here and what all these children benefit from the money given by the generous donors in Scandinavia? The very nature of our work is all about educating children. You know, very many people wonder how can we ever get Africa out of poverty? But it's all about education. If we can really educate a child, that child goes back into his family, gets a good job, it brings the whole family out of the poverty situation they're in. Um, at the moment we would be involved with about 6,000 children in our various schools at various different levels. The educational journey of a child begins when they're three, so they come to us, they're really gorgeous. They're about three. And then they go all the way, seven years in, three years in a kindergarten, seven years in a primary, and then another six years in the secondary. So they, they stay with us for quite a long time. When you see the schools, when you arrive there, what is the emotion that goes through you? Well, different days, it's different things. Sometimes I see all the things that need to be done that are not done. But when you look, when I look at the students, I think the emotion I have is an incredible satisfaction, because actually we've we're achieving what we've set out to do. And you look at these young students; you've seen them. They walk with such dignity, with such confidence, and with such a hope for their future, and it just is very satisfying. It takes a lot of work to bring a child from three to there. My dream is really big and I really like it. I want to be a engineer, an aviation engineer or a, a, or a aero engineer. Oh, that's a big dream. And I would like to help many people who are, who are in the same category like me, those who don't have school fees and are orphans, mm. so that they can be the, the person who is me today and the person who will be me in the future. As a child and growing up, I've always been an extremely fearful person. And I became a nun when I was 21 because I wanted to have an assurance that I would go to heaven. And so there became a journey for about eight years. I ended up leaving there. By the time I left there, I was full of fear and phobias of all different kinds that I don't need to talk to, too much about. And then went into an alternative lifestyle, and a, a time when I really didn't want to know more, any more about God. And I was in a relationship with an atheist, and if it had been possible, I would have prayed to become one. But that's not possible. <laughs> so, but then I had an encounter with the Lord one day. I found my Bible, cleaned it up, opened it up and here's Jesus talking to me. It was as if he was sitting there right in front of me saying, you believe in God, believe also in me. In my father's house are many mansions and if it wasn't so, I would have told you. I've gone there to prepare a place for you. But with such an amazing sense of love and acceptance. For years, I had tried to become a good person, to work for God, to become acceptable so I could go to heaven. But here he is telling me he's done that for me. And that kind of began a journey where I totally changed. So a nun turned hippie turned born again Christian ends up in Uganda. 
What happened? Well, all my life I had wanted to be a missionary, but my, that kind of faded away during my hippie time. But after I was born again, I met with, with a couple who was coming here to Uganda, and I asked if I could join them. So I joined them, and while I was here, I felt totally at home. And I met, had different connections here, and six, after that first journey, I came back six months later, lived with a Ugandan family here for some time, and then started doing television work for children. Just My, like that? No, I met somebody one day walking along the street of Kampala, and don't ask me who it was, I don't know, maybe it was an angel, and this person stopped me and said, would I consider doing television work for children? And he connected me with the right person. I went to talk to him. And I told him I'd be happy to do this if it is children's Bible time. Now, before I left Australia, I came here with one suitcase, a one-way ticket, and two 44-gallon drums full of children's materials that people were donating to me. So everything had already been prepared before I even came here. So the very first thing I did here was, for three years, a children's Bible time program for television and radio also. So they became very, very popular programs. And in those days, there was only one channel with three cameras in Uganda. So it wasn't a big deal. I had to do my own makeup, do our own backdrops and prepare the kids. And yeah, but that was a pretty amazing time. Mm. After three years of television, Trudy had not only gained quite a bit of fame, but also met a man and got married. But instead of settling down to a comfortable middle-class lifestyle, they decided to start working in war-torn North Uganda. I was sitting at home one day and I, I really felt in my heart that God was saying that we were to go to the north and to go there to show those people his love. Now, northern Uganda, I think it was an indescribably poor place and it had been in war for years. It was horrible. And I'd never been there. Francis hadn't been home, my husband, for eight years. But we had no money even to go there. But the word that God gave me was, go there, show those people my love, tell them I've not forgotten them and that they should not forget me. And a people who've become no people will be, again become a people. Now, I share that with my husband as it came to me. As I said, we had really no money to go there because it's a, by then it was about a 10, 11 hour journey because the roads were so bad and very, very dangerous. Now, within a month or so, some people came looking for us from the Netherlands and they, they wanted to sponsor children where nobody else was working. And without knowing much about us, gave us a check for $17,000 for us to go to the north, we only had a tiny little Suzuki that could, you go through big potholes where this, the whole car just disappears. And dangerous. Anyway, we went. And I'd never been to the north, but the grass was this high, you couldn't see anything. So we stood where France, Francis is from the north, in his village, and all I could see was grass. But within about 20 minutes, quite a number of people had gathered on the roadside were hugging him, were so happy to see him. And from that, we began a journey of building schools, sponsoring children, together with people from the Netherlands at that time. And then also, ABC Children's Aid from Iceland made a connection with us. That was quite a long story, but we somehow got connected. And also with children in Gulu, not in Kitagum, but also in the north. The conflict was a political conflict, very political, and that is really because the, the president who had just come into power in 86 was from Western Uganda. Previous presidents had been from West Nile and from Northern Uganda. So it was a lot of tribal conflict. Um, the rebels and the army <laughs> were both pretty bad. And we were working with a lot of widows whose noses and ears had been cut off, children who'd been cooked, and people were forced to eat, children without noses and ears. It was, pre it was pretty horrific. And Francis and I could never travel there together because once we got across the border to the north, there was no communication. And I would say goodbye to him and 
really could never say I'll be back tomorrow or next week because we always had to wait until the situation was safe enough for us to travel. Now, what I want to tell, this is just amazing. You, you say that I'm a very strong woman. I appear to be so, but I wasn't always. I was an extremely fearful person. I had so many phobias and fears, but through the change that God has wrought in my life, his strength has become my strength. But I prayed one day and I said, God, take me to a place where I can really honestly have, depend on you and not upon myself. And that's the experience that I was privileged to have in the north. Because really, on every road we traveled, in every village we walked, it was always fraught with danger. And you knew that, that I knew that at any moment we could go blow up or... It was a privilege. Who else gets to experience that? Not many people. And it's such, it's such an incredible thing to be in a place where the reality of trusting God is a reality, not just words. And you know for sure that you live because He lives. And this is true, this is not just religion. So we were doing our work consecutively Whenever we couldn't go north, we were building here. We are here in Wakiso district. We are here about seven miles from Kampala, the capital city. If we look around here, there are big, beautiful houses coming up because the middle classes are beginning to come and the, the city is moving outward in every direction. And the poor are being pushed out. Most of the children we work with are from single parent families are from HIV widows, um, all kinds of different backgrounds, but high need families. We also have some other children in our schools because we also know we cannot always depend on people from abroad. There'll come a time when we need to be self-sustaining and we are working towards that. So in most of our schools, we now have half private children and half sponsored children. It is our hope that one day and now our results are coming up very high, we're doing extremely well, that we can attract more of the rich children that will pay more school fees and that those school fees will one day assist in helping the poor. But we are not there yet. So we still need help to help these children who would otherwise be in very low grade schools and they will never come up to any level where they can come out of their poverty. So what struck me when I walked into your compound together with uh, Children's Mission General Secretary Bo Wallenberg was the pride, the sense of pride in the students, the straight backs, the chins held high. Where do you think they get this pride? I can only guess. But I know when children come to our school, they are made to feel special. They know also many of them have a sponsor and that that sponsor also makes them, they feel very proud. They have somebody who cares for them, even outside Uganda. But even within Uganda, we teach our teachers to handle the children with dignity and to make, children are special, they don't belong to us. We make very sure that everybody understands these are God's children. The parents can make the body, but the life comes from God. And yeah, once they put that uniform on, you can see it. The difference between our schools and other schools, there, there is a palpable difference. And I think it's because they have that feeling of being special, significant. You seem like an incredibly strong woman, an entrepreneur, extravaganza, but I know you have the opinion that what you made in your life wasn't your doing. So explain. Okay, I can tell you that I am the most ordinary person you could meet. Who believes in an extraordinary God. Who has given me such strength. And such creativity. And such courage. That this is not normal. But I am very ordinary. But he's not. Trudy Odita, it's been a... Uh real privilege and a pleasure to meet you. Thank you so much. Pleasure.